development. So yes, this is basic application development. Uh, what does that mean? So uh, if you're familiar with Concrete 5, uh, which you probably are to be in this training, um, we, there are a number of different components when you're dealing with the Concrete 5 site. Um, blocks are the sort of basic uh, presentational uh, bits that make up a, you know, a page in Concrete 5. And, uh, but uh, if you need to get deeper than just controlling a bit of uh, content that shows up on a page, if you want to really extend your site to do things that it doesn't do out of the box in a more fundamental way, you're going to be you're going to be adding more uh, interaction, more interactivity to your site um, than just a block than just a block does. Um, that's sort of what we refer we refer to as applications. So uh, it's definitely it's not a uh, it's not a specific term for Concrete 5, but if you're uh, adding more interactivity, like you're turning your site from just a static, uh, just a site that you can manage through the CMS, and uh, you want to actually add a form on your page that's, a, that's custom, that uh, you know, turns your site into a real estate listing service or a, or a community portal or something along those lines, uh, turn your site into more of an application then uh, Concrete 5 definitely has the tools to allow you to do that and that we're going to be going through some of that stuff today from a developer's perspective. We won't be going through all of it because there is an advanced applications course and Concrete 5 has a lot of ways of uh, allowing itself to be extended. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll get started. So this is my typical Concrete 5 site and uh, as I'm navigating the site, um, You'll notice my URL changes. Um, we uh, we were pretty clear early on in Concrete 5 that we wanted to really enforce the concept of pages because coming to CMS from a, or coming from you know PHP and CMS is from a, a more production oriented web background. It always confused me why CMSs made up different terms for what were essentially pages in a website. And um, at its core, we were always we, we approach web development in a pretty page centric way. So as you're clicking on, you know, a page in this mock website, that's what they are. They're called pages. And in Concrete 5, uh, you're undoubtedly familiar with the concept of a page type. So uh, these are primarily used form factors. Um, right sidebar, left sidebar, full blog entry. These are the page types that get installed by default. Um, and a page type is really sort of analogous to a template, or uh, in a in a or a post in a, in WordPress or something along those lines. It's meant to be a reusable type of page that you may want to add add somewhere. Now that could be form factor based. So if you have a site where you need a left sidebar all over the place, you make a page type that's called left sidebar, and you create a template for it um, that puts the sidebar on the left. It could be more functional based. So uh, if you want to actually, uh, if you want to actually have a press release, a press room section of your site, and uh, you create a press release page type, uh, since page types let you attach different permissions to them based on the type of page, you can really you could bust it out function or you could bust it out uh, functionally and uh, and uh, use it uh, as a more of a uh, more of a uh, less about form factor and more about uh, the sort of business requirements for, for the page type. Um, uh, but the key to all of these uses of a page is uh, it's meant to be reusable. But uh, we thought pretty early on with Concrete 5 that not every page in your site is meant to be reusable. And so at the beginning of, of working with Concrete, we thought, well, there, every site needs a login page. They all need some kind of a page for registration if you've got public registration. Um, should those just be PHP scripts in a directory somewhere? And, you know, at first we thought perhaps yes, but then, you know, that's not very appealing because even though they are, um, you know, they're very custom stuff, you may want them to show up in your site as part of a as part of a hierarchy you know you um, you might want the login page to show up in your navigation for example um, you may want to use permissions on them the same way at the page level the same way that you use permissions on other non uh, on other uh, page type uh, reusable pages in your site um, so just because something is uh, a very 
is custom and not meant to be added more than once to a site doesn't mean that it shouldn't benefit in some of the same ways as other pages that you add to your site. Um, so with that, we stumbled upon the idea of single pages. And that's the first thing that I really want to get into today is the idea of these are pages that get added to your site based on where they show up in your file system hierarchy. They're not meant to be moved around. You create, they, they uh, get instantiated in your site based on uh, how they get uh, added through the file system, but they are once installed complete concrete five pages that show up through the dashboard sitemap. So if I come to my sitemap here, you can see I have a pretty basic Concrete 5 site that is populated by uh, instances of page, uh, page types that have been added through the site. But if I click this Options tab and say Show System Pages, I can actually show a whole bunch of other stuff that gets installed by Concrete and is sort of meant to be kept behind the scenes. Um, here, for example, register and login show up. Well, these aren't pages that show up when you're when you're coming to add a new page. Um, these are pages that sort of that are real Concrete Five pages. I can click on them, but when I visit them, they are very um, they are very specific to. Uh, um, that's a that's a quirk since I don't have registration enabled. Um, these are uh, meant to be added in only one spot, and you'll notice down here that a node called dashboard shows up. All of these are the same types of, uh, <laughs> it's bad, it's a misnomer. All of these are instances of single pages as well. So the entire dashboard functions the same way. They are all what we call single pages because each page you know, is its very own, uh, very own custom problem solver. So let's show how this looks in the file system. If I come into my single pages directory down here, you can see I have a bunch of PHP files that kind of correspond to their hierarchy in the site. So login.php, register, um, some other things that are kind of custom. If I head into the dashboard, you can see these are all single pages that, um, that perform sort of one task and they live at one spot in the file system and they're not meant to be moved around, but you, you can, but they're really not meant to be. Um, and they get installed at that one spot. And you can, uh, more important than any of this, is you can make your own single pages in your site if you find that you need something to act as a page, but uh, really be a, custom, uh, be a custom script that you don't want to have to add throughout your site. So let's go through the process of adding a single page to a site. No. So you'll notice I am going to add a new PHP page and we're going to call this example page.php. And I've come into my root web directory and there's a single pages directory here which is empty and I'm going to save this here. I've only typed in some text. This is my single page. Now, if I come to index.php slash example page, I get page not found. But this is actually where this is going to show up. The problem is I have not actually installed this page yet into my Concrete 5 site. So that's the first thing that you should learn uh, when working with single pages is that just creating them in the file system isn't enough. They need to actually, for performance reasons and for deployment reasons, there actually has to be a, we have to actually call that single page to be installed. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do. In my pages and themes section of the dashboard, you'll notice there is a single pages listing down here. If I click this, you can see all the different single pages attached or uh, installed in my site. And there's a lot of them because the new dashboard in 5.5 breaks things out into a lot of different uh, smaller pages. To add a single page here, you just type in the page that you want to add. And you click this, 
you add it, page successfully added, you can see my page now appears at the uh, top of this list. And you can see the path to it. And since uh, we do a little bit of um, guessing as to what the name of the page you want to, uh, what the name of the page you want to have uh, should be named, we guess based on the, uh, on the name of the file itself. So now, if I head back to this, you can see that a page shows up. And since this is a page in Concrete 5 at the root, it actually shows up in my navs, shows up in my sitemap. It is a page. But if I go to design, choose a page type, the page is a single page, which means it doesn't have a page type associated with it. Uh, single pages are like concrete five pages in other respects in that they can interact with, you know, areas, they can have blocks attached to them. Uh, if you add a main area to a single page, in the same way that you would when working with a theme, you can actually add blocks to it. Um, but there's a lot of other um, cool things that single pages can do than uh, just the regular stuff that uh, concrete five pages do. So uh, you'll notice there's not much in my single page here. There's just this text. But somehow I actually, this isn't just a white screen. There is actually content wrapping the, the inner content of my single page. And this is something that, uh, that single pages do by design. So since we didn't want sing learning early on that uh, when we had login as a single page, uh, the it's the forms in the middle which are important, but the content the content around it could change. So if uh, if uh, single pages live in this one spot outside of themes, well, what happens if I change my theme? How does it know what to look like? Well, if I do that, you can actually see. That's not a very good example. It's hard to read. You can actually see everything still works, and yet everything is different. Well, that's because themes know how. There is a mechanism inside all themes, and inside all themes shown in the marketplace as well. Um, which lets them work with any single page. And I will show that at this point right now. So if I head into my Greek yogurt theme, you'll notice I have templates for all of the different page types, including left sidebar, blog entry, default, which is used when a page type exists that doesn't have a corresponding theme in the directory. Well, you'll notice there the, the file at the very bottom of the uh, directory listing which is at the bottom of all theme directory listings, or close to it at least, um, is view.php. This file has to be in a theme. If it's not and you try and access a single page through that theme, you'll get a big error. And it works this way. Let's open default.php. This is default.php. You'll notice we have editable areas here. We've got certain divs which work with the theme. If I look at view.php, I have the same divs, uh, the same uh, general uh, templates, but instead of a main area, which I could have um, in addition to this, this is the part that I need to have in my view.php. I need to have this line, PHP print inner content. So what, what this means is when working with single pages, the content of the single page is rendered first inside, um, and then it is stored and then output in the theme in the location of this print inner content statement. So if we don't have this, all of a sudden my single pages are completely blank. However, if I do have this, it, uh, it shows my content. And this is uh, what allows different, uh, this is what allows uh, different single pages to use different themes successfully.
So if I change the theme that renders my login page, uh, the login page still works. It may not look 100% perfect, but it still, it still works. And so that's kind of the basics of, uh, of how single pages uh, work from a, at, the, at the most basic level. Um, I mentioned file systems before. Um, single pages, as you can see through this, can work with a hierarchy that goes um, that goes for as long as as you would like. I have example page dot here. Let's say we want to add another single page beneath example page. So at this point, I have, whoops, I have created a folder called example page and then another .php here. If I go into single pages, if I type in another here, I'm going to get an error because it's not actually another .php in the root. It's actually underneath example page. So if I type example page and then another, should install just fine. If I go to example page here, it doesn't show anything. However, I could add a I could add an auto nav here that shows me pages beneath this page. <laughs> it floats weird. Um, and then if I come to example underscore page slash another you can see my second single page is rendering the same way. Single pages don't have to be exactly named this way. They can be named, um, they can be named in a different uh, construct. So let's try something else here. You might want to do this if you anticipate adding more single pages at a particular level. So, uh, You'll notice when I added example underscore page before, um, what I could also have called it is this. Let's call this one newsroom. I could call this newsroom.php or I could name this view.php under newsroom. Go back to single page. Now it's not newsroom slash view. It's just newsroom. It's just an alternate way of specifying where stuff lives. So if I go to newsroom slash, I get the newsroom single page, but it's actually at view.php. It's just a matter of preference, whether you want example underscore page.php and the folder. Really, uh, they both work. So, so this is a uh, pretty basic. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of uh, you know functionality to these demos, but we will get to there. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? I see one in here. Uh, Oscar asks, can you do custom login pages designs with single pages? Yes, you can. I mean, this is all PHP coding, so you're going to have to write this code yourself, but um, you can uh, you can override the login. Um, you can override the login uh, page in your local Concrete 5 install. You can also... Uh, what is happening here? You can also um, create a, a custom single page that doesn't have certain parameters or certain bits. So uh, you could create your own login page here um, that submits uh, to its own custom controller, which we will go we will go over in one in a, in a moment. Yeah, you definitely can.
Um, hold on one second. I will be right back. Thanks. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Had a minor, minor issue with something, but should be, should be all taken care of. Um, so as I, as I was saying, these aren't necessarily the most uh, compelling examples of single pages because they don't have what typically are necessary for single. The the reason you use single pages in the first place is because you actually need uh, some interactivity. And we're going to go through the primary method by which single pages get interactive, which is what's called controllers. And I'm going to use this newsroom single page as my sort of test for most of this stuff. Um, this isn't necessarily a newsroom, but uh, it sounds cool. So here I have a newsroom single page and a view.php here. Let's say I want to query my concrete five site for some for some information. Um, I could do that from within view.php because it is completely a uh, it's a PHP script but in general that's sort of bad practice because it, you want most of the time to have your uh, logic so your sort of back-end uh, interactivity separate from the uh, view layer so separate from the the, the, uh, the script that actually displays that information. So that's why we have controllers. Now you'll notice, uh, so it seems obvious, but I'll just mention it because it is useful. Uh, you don't have to have a controller with these. These single pages installed just fine without them. Uh, you can have a quick and dirty form this way that just submits somewhere else. Uh, you don't need a controller when you're working with a single page, but most of them have it. And to give a controller to this page, I simply go into my controllers directory and I can either create newsroom.php or newsroom the folder and a script named controller inside it. And since I actually created newsroom slash view, I'm going to create newsroom slash controller. Controllers are PHP scripts with one class inside them, and they have to be named a certain way, and they have to extend the, the built-in controller class. So that's what this is doing. They have to be named newsroom and then controller. The case is also important. If you have more than one level, so if you had newsroom slash items, you would need to name it newsroom uppercase items controller. This should be somewhat familiar to you if you have worked with blocks at all in Concrete 5. So now I have a controller. It doesn't do anything because uh, I haven't really done anything here, but we can test that it is loading. It's loading, so that's good. And then I want something to happen when I view my page. So I create view.php. Now, anytime my page is viewed, this runs. And it's up to me to make something happen here. So let's, let's, uh, let's work with uh, passing data from the controller into the view. In Concrete 5, there is a, um, well, let's, let's do this first. Super simple example. Say I have a, uh, I have some process that is getting a variable uh, data from somewhere, like color, and I have it all taking place within my view, or within my controller, and then I want to pass this data into my view. Well, I can open up my view. And I can 
let's say this is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting there to be a variable called selected color. Well, if I look at this now, it's not going to show anything because I haven't set this variable. To set a variable, is you use the appropriately named method set from within your controller. And you, your second option is you just pass the variable. This could be a string. It could be an object. It could be all sorts of different stuff. Now you see that this actually shows up in my view. So this is a super simple example of taking some data that we've acquired in the controller and passing it into the view. This can be programmatic. Now at this point you can see I'm passing a random number from within my uh, from within my controller into the view. Very basic stuff. I can get some information about the currently logged in user. This is kind of useful. The user object has a method called get username. We'll go over this more in a minute, but you can see that now it knows the admin is logged in. Very basic stuff, and this works. Um, this works from within the view, and since I'm viewing the page every time the page is viewed, this is going to this is going to work. Now. This wouldn't be that compelling if it's all that it did. However, there's m you can run different actions, what we call tasks, from within the same single page that do different stuff. So I'm showing the username because I am looking at the, uh, I'm viewing the page. now. Let's say I wanted to do something else. Let's say I had a process where it was called, uh, I have a process where I want to actually add some information to, uh, to a fake database. I have a link here at the bottom, add. So this is what it's going to look like here. If I wanted to click on this link and then hide what I was seeing and show a form instead, here's how I would do that. Actually, we'll do this instead. We are going to be using the URL function primarily in a lot of this. There's also an action function, which is kind of like URL, but a little bit uh, but with fewer parameters. The URL function, the first uh, parameter to it is uh, the path to the page that you want to uh, go to. So since this is a single page, it's always going to be slash newsroom at the root of the site. And then the second function is the controller method that we want to run. So if I refresh this and mouse over my add function, if you can see that at the bottom of my browser window, um, if you can see, uh, if you can see, uh, um, my URL, it says newsroom slash add. That is, uh, how, uh, uh, single pages and controller methods look. We try and keep the URLs as pretty as we can. And if we click on this, you'll see we get a page not found error. That's because Concrete 5 attempts to load up a single page at newsroom slash add and can't find one uh, because one doesn't exist. Well, we don't need a single page. What we need to do is define a controller method in our newsroom controller. View is automatically run whenever we view that page. It's also automatically run if we go to slash view. Um, but 
add needs to be defined here as a controller method. Now that I've defined it and I refresh, I get the same page. Now you'll notice I don't anymore have my username displayed down here. That's because view doesn't automatically run. Um, view only runs if you come to this page without a custom controller method. Um, since I have, uh, since I am running a custom controller method, add, it doesn't run view and username doesn't get displayed. Now, since this is all object oriented PHP, I could just add this view here and now all of a sudden, now it will work again. And there are some other things that you can run, some convenience methods that uh, you can define that I will talk about in a second, um, that uh, if you want to run code, regardless of which controller method you're visiting, that's, uh, uh, I can show you how to do that. <laughs>